Hey guys, what's going on dudes? It is David here. We are back with another video. Now in this video guys, we shall be discussing the Atlanta Falcons season review. Now before I get into this, I just wanted to let you guys know that currently I don't have my computer right now. So if you guys don't see anything behind me that has to do with the Falcons background, you guys are just going to see the green screen for the time being. But today we shall be giving you, or I shall be giving you my review of the Atlanta Falcons season. Now... If you had to ask me 7 and 10 at the beginning of the season, I predicted 10 and 7. I I thought a lot of teams that we that we lost to were going to be better or were going to be worse. I didn't think Philadelphia was going to be that good. I thought we would beat the football the Washington football team. I thought we would actually beat Dallas and we got blown out by Dallas, so that is an L for me. But overall, 7 and 10. I mean, Considering the way this team's the way the team is in one possession games, we were seven and two in one possession games, which compared to last year where we were two and eight in one possession games, things are starting to change. And I just wanted to say this straight off the bat. This season was not Matt Ryan's fault. It was not Matt Ryan's fault. So for everybody that's blaming Matt Ryan, blame the offensive line. Blame the fact that Calvin Ridley was out for a majority of the season and he still had to work with a bad offensive line. He got sacked 37 times. And he almost he almost continued his record with 4,000 yards receiving uh, passing and continues the seasons. But he was 355 for 527 completions. 355 completions for 527 attempts. He threw for 3,752 yards. He had 19 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. So, yes, it was a down season for Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons, but can you really blame Matt Ryan with the receivers that he had? Russell Gage only got better during the second half of the season. Zacchaeus was barely there. He had, obviously, Kyle Pitts. But without the number one receiver in Cal Calvin Ridley, it was just a d disappointing season for the Falcons. Now moving on to the running game. Mike Davis had 132 carries for 473 yards, three touchdowns. And the guy that led us in running was Cordell Patterson. He had 146 carries with 670 yards and six touchdowns. And in total, the rushing yards, the Atlanta Falcons rushing game had 1,080 yards rushing. So between two running backs for the Atlanta Falcons... Only we only had a thousand yards rushing. Uh, compared to Derrick Henry, which is run one guy who almost finished with a thousand yards and he missed the last eight games of the season. That's not a very good thing for the Atlanta Falcons rushing game. Now, when it comes to the receiving game, Russell Gage, fifty-seven receptions, six hundred forty-four yards, three touchdowns. Okay, Cal Pitts, sixty-six receptions, one thousand and eighteen yards, one touchdown. The only problem I have is the fact that he only got one touchdown throughout the season. Zacchaeus, 28 receptions, 359 yards, three touchdowns. So we were basically using Zacchaeus as a deep threat or deep ball receiver. So that's the reason why I think he had those three touchdowns. And then Tajay Sharp. I'm not counting Cordell Patterson because it seems like we use Cordell Patterson more of a running back than we did a wide receiver, even though he finished fourth best. Actually, third best in terms of receiving for the Falcons. Tajay Sharp, 25 receptions, 230 yards, zero touchdowns. So, a goose egg. So, you look at the receiving yards. Besides Kyle Pitts, the best receiver was Russell Gage. And 600, 644 yards and three touchdowns. That's not very impressive for the Falcons uh, receiving, receiving game. Now, and moving on into what we need to focus on the most when it comes to the first round pick, and we'll we'll get we'll get onto that and which pick we have on. I mean, it's already announced, but Foisade Lunkun led the NFL in tackles. He had 179 tackles, two sacks, four tackles for loss, and three picks. So Foisade Lunkun, whose cur whose contract is currently expiring at the end of the month, the Falcons definitely re need to resign him because if we have a guy like that who can lead us to the future. Oh man, I'm going to love next season. I'm going to love next season. AJ Terrell, 75 tackles, one sack, three sacks for loss, and zero. AJ Terrell, 75 tackles, one sack, 
three tackle for loss, and three interceptions. Three interceptions from, from AJ Turo, who in his sophomore year performed very, very well. And I'm still very upset at the fact that AJ Turrell did not get called up to the Pro Bowl. Deion Jones, 131 tackles, two sacks, seven tackles for loss, zero interceptions. Now, looking at this, he also had a very good season. 131 tackles, two sacks, seven tackles for loss, and zero interceptions. The interceptions is all right, considering employees that Lou Kuhn had three. But Deion Jones had a very good season. Now, I'm sorry about this, but Grady Jarrett, 58 tackles, one sack, three tackles for loss, zero picks. Grady Jarrett, I can understand the tackles, but... Come on, the sacks and tackles for loss, that's got to be up. He's a defensive tackle. He needs he needs to be getting more tackles for loss and more sacks in there. He should have at least three to four sacks or possibly even five tackles for loss. But I don't really know what's going on with Ray Jerry right now. I mean, he's had an okay season, but it's it, we'll just have to see when it comes to the future. And Dante Fowler Jr., the Florida boy, 33 tackles, 4.5 sacks, six tackles for loss, zero interceptions. So even though I've slewed Dante Fowler Jr., he had a very he had a good season with the 4.5 sacks and six tackles for loss. He led the team in sacks. He led the team in sacks and he was second in tackles for loss. So that's that's a very good that's a good season for me when it comes to Dante Fowler Jr. But considering the fact that we finished seven and ten, we have the eighth pick in the draft. We are going to be the 8th pick in the draft room, going from the 4th pick to the 8th pick. Now, we could have had anywhere from 7 to 14, so it, it, it really just de depend on the results. And I like I said, I predicted 10 and 7 through through at the beginning of the season. I was definitely wrong. If I had said like 8, if I predicted like 9 and 8 or 8 and 9, I would have been so close on there. But when it comes now to the NFL draft, what do the Falcons need to do in terms of the draft? Well, we have one first rounder, two second rounders, one third rounder, one fourth rounder, one fifth, one sixth, and one seventh. The first round needs to be defensive line. We need to get somebody on that defensive line at the edge position. Where we had um, Dante Fowler Jr. playing, we need to have somebody there too to help out that defense because it can't just be Grady Jr. It can't just be Dante Fowler Jr. Marlon Davidson is okay, but he hasn't. He needs to have like a breakout season in order to do this. Second round pick, the first second round pick, we need to go offensive line. We need to go right tackle because Caleb McGarry is not it. Caleb McGarry is not it when it comes to the Atlanta Falcons. I don't really think he's going to be it because he got bullied this whole season. He got bullied this whole season, and he's not a very good right tackle. I think, and he's a first round pick. I think it was a late first round pick, but still, a first round pick being the, being not this good definitely needs to be better. Second, the second second round pick, we need to go wide receiver. We need to get somebody to add to the weapons that Matt Ryan has. If if Calvin Ridley ends up not returning and we end up trading Calvin Ridley, we keep, we'll probably get another first round pick in there. So then we go wide receiver. But I think we need to go wide receiver in second round. Third round, add a running back. Fourth round, defensive lineman. Fifth round, defensive back. Sixth round, another offensive lineman. And seventh round, we need to go defensive lineman. So basically... We need to go a defensive line from the beginning because if we keep Foysai Lunkun, our linebackers are going to be good because we have Michael Walker, we have Deion Jones, and then we have Foysai Lunkun. So it's definitely going to be that defensive line. Grady Jarrett needs some help. Dante Fowler Jr. needs some help. And that's where the Falcons need to go. But in terms of the Falcons season review, based off the stats and everything, I think it's an okay season for the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, I wasn't really expecting the playoffs. I, I said at the beginning of the season, I'd be very surprised if the Falcons made the playoffs. But still, 7-10, eighth, eighth, eighth pick overall in the draft. It's going to be very interesting to see. Because I'm very interested to see what the Falcons do with that eighth selection overall. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you guys all later in more sports video. But anyway, guys, I will see you guys all later. Peace.